you were you know, at the center in Colorado where you're working with John Pilkington, or, uh, Pilka Jr. Yeah, and Michael Clance and yeah. these people. Mm -hmm. Could you go in a little deeper on the background on how you ended up there, how you got interested in this with them? as well as getting into this field in general. Yeah, so when I finished my PhD in public policy from Georgia Tech in 2004, mm -hmm. uh, I was offered this opportunity to be, become a postdoctoral fellow in National Center for Atmospheric Research in Boulder, Colorado, uh, to do two kinds of work. One was on understanding the value of information, especially value of uncertain forecast information. Uh, so I studied uh, with the, my postdoc mentors, Rebecca Morse and uh, Jeff Lazo on that aspect of it. Secondly, I was working with Michael Glantz, uh, on understanding the different aspects of mitigation to climate change as well as adaptation to climate change. So Roger Pilke Jr., who did this study, had was earlier on studied with Michael Glantz, mm -hmm. and he was also in, interested in looking at hurricane forecast information and about how to do the adaptation to hurricane. So it was in that context that the idea of this study came, and when I talked with the NOAA people, uh, the, the, the federal agency that deals with all these National Hurricane Center and some other mm -hmm. officials, so that's what led to this. Yeah, well, we'll start from the major takeaway points on that paper. It simply states that hurricanes are going to be producing more damage. What does the research suggest is driving this? At that point of time, uh, Roger Pilke Jr. there had just uh, mm -hmm. done some preliminary analysis of uh, like a descriptive statistics type of analysis yeah. of the hurricane damage data from 1900 to 1998 or so. Yeah. And uh, in that paper, they established that hurricane damages, if they are normalized by uh, the population density and the, and the GDP and some of these other uh, socio-demographic change factors, then we are not seeing any upward trend in the hurricane uh, damages over this like 100-year period. And that was kind of counterintuitive finding, but what my contention was that um, it's not really just the normalization by these wealth factors and these other uh, housing and population density that matters. What matters more is we need to understand like what are the weights of these different changes in, in, um, in terms of like say how much change in the housing density or how much change in the population density affects the changes in the hurri hurricane damages. So that was the driving motivation for this paper and then at the same time, uh, there was this uh, new research coming out of some of the global climate change simulation models, like Nutsi et al. that I cite in this paper, uh, that predicted that in the 21st century, because of global climate change, their simulation models were predicting about 8 to 16 percent increase, um, like annual average increase in the hurricane intensity uh, of all the landfalling hurricanes. Uh, so that is a major change. Yeah, now right. the question was that from the public policy perspective um, or, and then from the perspective of the land use adaptation and adaptation to climate change, uh, what would be uh, the overall impact of these rising increasing intensity like in terms of the quantitative estimate of that. So one of the major goals of this paper is to uh, quantify the changes in the damages controlling for everything else with respect to the changes in the hurricane intensity. We also talked about, you know, you mentioned the sine wave of damage so that you see a pattern of rising and falling over the course of years, but generally with an upward direction to it. Yeah, the, the, and, and we estimate that the linear upward trend, but yeah. if the sine wave effect comes in because of a variety of factors, because, mm -hmm. you know, we're, we're talking about like thousands of uh, miles of coast from all the way from uh, Nova Scotia, but I mean, my analysis was limited to the U.S. Uh, Atlantic coast all the way to the Gulf Coast. So um, a hurricane can make landfall in anywhere. So there is a lot of variability in that. Uh, like uh, when it makes landfall in an urban area, the damages can go up drastically versus when it makes a landfall in an agricultural area or just uh, like yeah. ecological landscape. And as we were just reminded with Sandy in New York and Irene here in Vermont, which is well away from Hurricane Alley just the year before, topic in the disaster management community of much interest is that when, uh, with the rising intensity due to the climate change, the hurricanes make landfalls in urban areas like uh, in the case of Hurricane Katrina in New Orleans, as well as here in the case of uh, New Jersey or lower Manhattan even. Yeah. Um, this was uh, really uh, a, a warning, a signal that we should heed and look at that. If we do not take action in terms of adaptation, 
uh, now we would maybe have m more damages, and, and that's exactly what's predicted in this study. What kind of action would the study suggest we should take? This study completes like one side of the equation. Uh, the, so the study measures uh, like, okay, what would be the benefit in terms of the, the adaptation to climate change uh, that could be derived by uh, controlling for or regulating the housing density as well as population density as well as agricultural land cover. The question is like we can, from the policy standpoint, say that let's go ahead and regulate those. But it's easier said than done because at the same time there will be certain costs to those regulations and those costs are, for example, we will not be able to the opportunity cost of not having agriculture in that square mile would be uh, also very important from the economic develop development standpoint. So I think uh, that side of the equation, like what is the cost of adaptation, needs to be estimated in a future study. And then, then comparing them with the adaptation benefits and seeing that, okay, what kind of strategy makes more sense than the other. Uh, so I think what we are looking at is there is a lot more convergence in the broader community about uh, landscape design-based approaches, is that we cannot say uh, blanketly, like, okay, let's regulate this much agriculture from this area and this much housing density from the other area. It would require, we would need to have a lot more higher resolution uh, study uh, of, of effects of these different policy interventions in the system. Well, thank you for coming in and talking today. I find it very interesting. I hope you have as well. Thank you very much for this opportunity. It's a real pleasure.